Well, uh, Greg, thanks so much for helping my project. Uh, could you say a little bit about yourself? Yeah, definitely. Greg Kayeski. Uh, currently work in the sports betting space for a company called Better Edge, where we connect sports bettors for no fee sports betting. Prior to that, I worked closely with Nathan at Anna Plan in the financial planning space. Yeah. I, have you ever thought uh, that you wish you had access to the Anna Plan platform in your business? I, I think that from uh, day to day, I was like, man, I wish I could just pop it open and create a model. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those that it's a awesome platform. Pricing is a little high, but uh, there's a lot of cool things you can do with it that uh, are nice to have, but Google Sheets and Excel get you pretty far in life too, though, as a couple person uh, operation. Absolutely. Google Sheets is amazing, especially like the scripting and, and everything. And yeah. Then, yeah. So, uh, well, I had a question. Did you know that NASA's planning to send astronauts uh, back to the moon? I did, loosely, um, through talking with you many times. Uh, I didn't know the full details of it, though, that I'd more than happy to be enlightened uh, further on it, though, too. Well, uh, last November, they uh, did a test flight of the rocket and capsule. It's going to take them around the moon. And then earlier this year, they selected four astronauts, uh, including the first woman and the first non-U.S. citizen, a uh, Canadian, uh, to um, be part of the first mission, which is like next year to go around the moon. And then um, the landing is currently um, planned for December uh, 2025. Of course, it's 2024 whenever I started this project. Uh, but uh, some people think it might be uh, 2026 or 2027 before that happens. So that's currently the 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 process. Nice. Very cool. Um, but uh, any thoughts? you think it's a good thing, bad thing? Have questions about it? Yeah. I mean, I think if we... If we want to continue to advance space exploration, I think the, the moon's a really good target to really become efficient at traveling to, orbiting, all of that. And I, you know, the more that we can set up a base there and have travel back and forth, then we'll be able to learn from those experiences and be able to apply those towards further ex space exploration, making it more efficient and just that much easier. So makes a lot of sense. Um, it's kind of crazy to think that, you know, we first went to the moon back in the 60s and, um, you know, there's been other space exploration and things going on, but there's not been a lot of, you know, push to get back there and make it a huge, you know, deal. Yeah, we've been going around in uh, low Earth orbit for like 50 years now. So have you tell me, actually, have we been back to the moon since the 60s or is that... Uh, 1972 is the last time. Okay. So that's crazy though. So you have about five to is it five years. We first made it in 67 and then 72. Yeah. That... So uh, 69 uh, was the first landing. Okay. Uh, and between 69 and 72, we had six landings on the moon. So a total of 12 people walked on the moon all during the Apollo program. Um, of course, there, there was uh, one of those, there was a seventh, uh, mission in the middle of that that was supposed to land, but you know they had a uh, accident on the way there, Apollo thirteen, and ended up having to abort the landing. So, hey, it was booby. It's a good one at that. I know all the excitement. Indeed, indeed. I, I, you know, considering Better's Edge and space, um, and thinking about Apollo thirteen, you know, there's a lot of, uh. A lot of people are initially interested in space, but then it becomes kind of um, um, boring, I guess. And I, I think maybe uh, part of the, the reason why is because there isn't the outcome isn't in. And I mean, like you're purposely trying to make it uh, like take away all the chances of failure. And so unlike like a sporting event where, you know, you might have some interest in is it going to be uh, one way or the other. And I think, you know, whenever we have like competition of like the, the Russians, you know, who's going to get there first, people were really excited. But then once the race was won, people kind of lost interest. And now the Chinese are, are really amping up their game. So maybe that'll bring more interest into it. Yeah, I think friendly competition always motivates people a little bit more uh, to try to, you know, beat somebody else to it or just have that banter, I think just adds, you know, a desire to get things done, which is a good thing.
Yeah, I mean, you have no idea how fast or slow you're going until you have somebody else to measure against. Yeah, absolutely. Makes sense. And plus, uh, you know, it could be a whole new expansion uh, area for a better's edge. Yeah, that's... Think about metaverse, think about, you know, space exploration. It's It's all kind of crazy in nature and kind of what the future holds. But yeah, I mean, kudos to you and your success and, you know, interviewing and just exploring this entire project's been, you know, exciting to kind of hear your passion and energy uh, behind it. Yeah, you know, you mentioned the future. Uh, whenever you think about the future of humanity, like 200 years out in regards to space, do you think there's a point somewhere in the next 200 years that we actually have people living off of the earth and just going about their, their lives? I think it's crazy to think 200 years out just because I feel like I can think, you know, 5, 10, 20 years out. And like, what do you think current technology advances are going to impact and change lives? But, you know, looking, I think the best way to look forward 100, 200 years is to look back 100 years and just the changes then. I, you know, I don't think you could fathom, you know, prior to airplanes thinking about, you know, what space trade, you know, airline travel space travel is today so i think we'll probably have you know some sort of colonization i think it may be necessity just out of environmental sustainability and trying to make sure that we have the right you know renewable energy sources solve that type of stuff um it'll be interesting though to see how we kind of take all of that into account and really find the new kind of future and what that looks like um but, you know, thinking 200 years out, AI, automation, all that type of stuff is almost, you know, a moot point because it becomes so advanced that, you know, what we think of today, I don't even know if I can fathom as it will become so normal, so natural. I know 200 years ago, we didn't even have the ability to record the human voice. You know, I mean, it's just, I mean, can you imagine? I mean, much less yeah. have a conversation like this. Yeah, it's nuts. So it's almost impossible for me to think that 200 years, you know, what do we, what, what was happening back in 1823, you know, it's, I know. Yeah, no, I, I mean, you're talking about outhouses were like a, a novelty. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So. So, like, I mean, like indoor plumbing was probably not a thing uh, 200 years ago. Do you, as you think about 200 years out, what do you kind of think of in that nature? You know, I kind of worry because I feel like people uh, are able to get away without being as engaged with like uh, nature and uh, having to develop their skills and things like that. Um, I mean, you can be, you don't necessarily have, to, I mean, you're, you're so isolated from the natural world inside a modern society that you live in a pretty much a contrib completely contrived world. And so I think we may be losing the skills to actually interact with the natural world, which if you ever want to explore or expand, ultimately you have to be able to do that. Yeah. And then, I mean, you think about traveling and colonizing other countries or other, you know, planets, if there's other life out there too, that, that opens up a whole interesting communication path and all that type of stuff as well that who knows, man. It'd be interesting. And, you know, I mean, some people think it might be possible for us to live that long, too. So uh, who knows? We might actually get to see it. Yeah, I I don't think I will. But uh, kudos if you do. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, well, if you could, would you take a trip to space? Yeah, it's a good question. I think I think I would. Um, I think the more it becomes normal and more success and, you know, a trip just to space is only, you know, what, 50, 60 miles up there that I think that just getting into like free fall atmosphere, I think is probably pretty normal and natural. Um, what is the, you know, goals of that trip? Is it just for getting out there? Or is it like something that's more dangerous and kind of further out there and needs more training? But I think it'd be, more that we have success to do, I think I'd probably sign up if it was affordable and a good option and um, pretty reliable in nature. Well, uh, let's say you had three choices. You had the choice of just doing like one of these suborbital trips, you know, going like uh, 50, uh, 60 miles up 
or you had the choice of going in orbit for a couple of days, or you had a choice of going to the moon, walking around and coming back in the course of a week. Uh, which one of those three do you think you would, would do? I think the moonwalk sounds the fun, most fun, but I I also would wait for it to become like more of a routine trip where it's natural. Um yeah, I mean they're not gonna pick a you know middle-aged man my age to go do a moonwalk early. So I think I'm good there to not have to worry about getting selected. But I mean at some point hopefully it becomes cheap enough where you know it'd be like going to Mount Everest or something, you know, not something that you could do on like a whim, but if you really wanted yeah. to, it wouldn't be beyond your means. Absolutely. Yeah. What year do you think we'll uh, be able to get a trip to space? Uh, I think uh, by 2030. Do you have the Nathan Price uh, fund set up to, to travel there? Or it's like, it's no, no, but I, I was planning to get on your platform after this call and, and see if I could take a big step. Awesome. Have at it. I appreciate it. You know, be responsible and, and have some fun with it. Yeah. Uh, the, no, I, I, I don't. I, I mean, right now to take a trip, you know, like to International Space Station on a, a SpaceX rocket takes about $55 million. So I, I'm, I need to uh, probably multiply what I got by a hundred. <laughs> I would have, uh, I would have, randomly guessed it would have been more so in the like 500 to a million range i don't know it was 5 million that's pretty crazy yeah it is for the 500 to a million range you're looking at like one of those suborbital you know 15 20 minute flights uh, nice. so interesting uh, yeah i learned something today so i appreciate that yeah well uh that's pretty much all the questions i had is is there anything uh you want to talk about or no, I appreciate you having me on and appreciate, you know, all the things you do. And it's cool to see uh, you making a massive impact in NASA. I really appreciate it. I'll go ahead and stop the recording then.